How's it going everybody? Welcome back to CM42 TV. Today we are talking about The Irishman, the Netflix original film that was posted in 2019 of course, the year that is now last year, which again is bonkers. I feel like for the first few videos of 2020 I've continued to say that. Oh my god, it's bonkers that we're in a new year, but that's how the world works, Christopher. Uh, yes, I just wanted to take some time out of the day to chat about The Irishman, uh, because I watched it last night, I watched it throughout yesterday. It's not just, you know, a, a task that you can do in a night. Uh, and then, you know, preparation for, you know, watching this film, I said to myself, I'm going to treat it like a, like a sort of mini Netflix series, maybe watch it in three acts, you know, start with, with you know, the first hour and a half. And then kind of work, you know, your way through it. Because if you don't know, The Irishman is three and a half hours long. When I heard The Irishman was coming out, it was a Scorsese film and it stars Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Harvey Keitel, Sebastian Maniscalco. I was like, yeah, I'm in, you know. But then, you know, obviously you go to watch it and you go into Netflix and you click on it and it comes up saying three and a half hours and you're like, my God. It's not necessarily that it's a bad thing that it's three and a half hours, but it's just a commitment, right? And everybody knows that, like, these films can go on for as long as they want, but if they're good, it doesn't matter how long they are, you know? And the examples of that, you know, are things like The Godfather and The Shawshank Redemption and, and even Seven Samurai and things like this that are, like, legendarily long films. I just said legendarily? Is that a word? Legendarily? That people know as being long films. And then people just go with it because, of course, they're these classics, you know, Gladiator's another one. These are these classics that people just want to watch because I, I, we don't care that they're three hours or they're four hours. Lord of the Rings, there's another one. But then, obviously, your average film length can be between, like, two and a half hours, two hours twenty, that sort of thing. I always say the optimum time for a film length is, like, one hour fifty to two and a half hours. I think that's a perfect sort of window between that, you know, those two lengths. That's the perfect film length for me. But, you know, when there's a when a longer film comes out or a shorter film comes out, does not necessarily deter me from watching it. It just kind of, if the film's not good and I'm not enjoying it, and the fact that it is really long, I'm getting frustrated by it, it really does affect my opinion of the film, which it shouldn't do. And I know that's bad, you know, I, I shouldn't do that at all. Films like these classic films that I mentioned can be as long as they want and they shouldn't affect my, you know, enjoyment of the film, but sometimes it does, depending on how you're feeling. 2001, A Space Odyssey would be another one. It was just popping into my head as I'm going here. Um, so yeah, I watched the first act of the film, which was about an hour and a half. Went out somewhere, went and had some drinks with my friends. Came back in at a decent time, because I was out at New Year, I didn't want to completely, you know, ruin my day today, like I did for January 1st. Suffering. Suffering. <laughs> Uh, so I, I came in, it was the evening of, you know, January 2nd, we'd now gotten past the midnight hour, I was hungry, made a pizza, and thought let's just put on the Irishman and see how much more I can watch. I ended up finishing the whole thing, so I managed to watch the whole thing in the one go, and to you out there you might be thinking, what's the big deal? To me that's a big deal. You know, I don't really, in terms of these films that are really long, I always try to, you know, watch them at my leisure. And the fact that this Netflix is so flexible, you know, you can literally just like, it, it's so good that you can just click on at any point. It's different if it was a cinema, you know, going and sitting for 3 hours and 29 minutes and watching the whole film in the one go. Which again, I'm sure would be a good, you know, experience because you're watching the whole story develop if you just had the patience to sit there for that time. But I love the fact that you're able to just kind of click out and, and tune in and make films like your own series sort of thing. I'm not even a series kind of guy, I'm more of a film fan, you know, I, I watch a lot more films than I do TV series. But it, it, it depends, it totally does depend. But um, I just, I was loving the film so much, I just didn't want to turn it off. And I kind of wanted to make this video today, and the reason I've rambled so long without actually talking about the film. And these these film reviews that I do, I don't really like talking about, you know, the, what makes the film great. It's more about my experience with the film and why I like it. And that is kind of why I wanted to make this, because even though it was so long, it was a total red flag for me. It's happened recently a couple of times, you know. Just ignoring that red flag and just doing it anyway and just watching it anyway and enjoying it. I've really have, you know, settled into these films and really connected with them. And then like The Irishman, right? It's so, you know, you look at my favourite films of all time. The Irishman does not, you know, represent any of that, you know. It's not like it's similar to any of my favourite films that I would really appreciate and connect to. But I just did, I just loved it. I just had such a good time watching it and maybe it was because of the actors. You know, maybe it was because of this relationship and this chemistry that they've built up over this years, or over all these years, between like Joe Pesci and De Niro and Al Pacino and that sort of thing. But it was just seeing them in this generation. You know, it's it's fine watching The Godfather and Casino and Goodfellas and all these things, watching them in their heyday and watching them when they were younger. These films that were ages ago, but now knowing a film that was just made, you know, they're still 
almost better than every other actor in Hollywood. They still have this great relationship, a gripping story that makes you forget who they are. You know, you could literally watch De Niro in any film and just be mesmerised, you know. And he's particularly great in this film. I just, I don't know if it's his age, I don't know if it's his experience, but obviously, I'm not going to spoil anything about the film, but it's like over almost like 15, 20 years this film's set in. He start off and he's really, really old and decrepit and grey. And he's like telling the story and you see it as it goes. And it goes right back to two decades ago or whatever it was um, from where, where like the opening point was set. And he's got like the slicked black hair, you know, and he's really, he's still a young guy and he kind of grows old in the film and stuff. Same with Joe Pesci. He meets Joe Pesci at this car garage and they become really good pals. Joe Pesci in this film. It's just something about Joe Pesci because I grew up on Joe Pesci being Home Alone and being Harry in Home Alone. You know, and all the people, you know, grew up seeing him in Casino and, and all these other films, you know, and they know him as that, as the gangster. And I know that's, we, we know he did his, his best work in that sort of genre, you know. But to me, he's always Harry in Home Alone. So seeing him play something different and just swearing like a trooper and talking about killing folk and stuff, it's just a bit, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's different, you know, and it's great. You know, he's, he's one of the greatest actors to ever live. And then you get Al Pacino, and in my head, when I think Al Pacino, I think, you know, like this this big boss man, you know, slick back, cigar, beer and stuff. Well, in this film, he's a bit of a goof. You know, he is still kind of the mob leader, but he's a bit daft, you know. There's a really good uh, UK actor called Stephen Graham that's in this film. He plays Tony Pro, and they call him the little guy. And he's on Graham Norton recently, and he's just like a total scouser. And, like, it just doesn't fit into the sort of Italian, New York, Irish kind of vibe and casting of this film. But it just, it was just great. It was just so funny. Him and Pacino just have this clash throughout the whole film and they're always bickering and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I just, what I want to say mainly for this film is that even though you may have been like me, you know, you may have, you may have been excited that a new Scorsese film is out. It was 2019, you were seeing Al Pacino and Joe Pesci and Robert De Niro act together again in a new film, a new story that is like hooking and gripping throughout like the other classics and then you may have went, oh my god it's nearly four hours or it's three and a half hours long no thanks I was like that, I gave it a shot, I'm making my top 10 of 2019 film list right now for the podcast I thought it's what I can't miss you know in terms of 2019 at movies or in movies you know Netflix counts now you know um, I had to check it out and I'm so happy I did, I had a great time I love the film. Will it be in my top 10? You'll have to listen to the podcast to find out, which will be out in a week or so, or a week and a half, whenever we decide to record it. It's looking like the 7th of January right now, but that could all change. Um, so, yeah, tune in for that. Go check it out if you liked it, or if you liked the idea. Um, you won't be disappointed. Also, shout out to uh, Sebastian Maniscalco, one of my favourite stand-up comedians and just one of my favourite entertainers. Twice now, he has surprised me in films that I didn't know he was in. Green Book would have been one of them. He just popped up in Green Book, which is kind of the same in terms of sort of an Italian, New York kind of vibe. And then, obviously, the Irish when he pops up for a bit as well. Yeah, good stuff. Always a pleasure to watch De Niro and Pesci and Pacino going together and that sort of thing. Harvey Keitel as well pops up a few times. Which is great. The writing is so like David Mamet like, where it's so you know flow. It's so quick and it just flows. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of it is you know improvised and stuff. It's the sort of film you want to make as an actor. You just sitting there watching it and just being like, I would love to be in a film like that. You know, it's so flawless and it's just so the story's so gripping and the fact they're able to do the three and a half hour thing. You know, I, I kind of admire that. They're kind of like you know who cares? It's Netflix. People are going to watch it at their leisure. People love Netflix. People love streaming things. People love all of us. Let's do it. And they did. And it was great. And I highly recommend it. Thumbs up from me of The Irishman. And thank you very much. A thumbs up to you for watching this video. Here on CM42 TV, I'm here every single day doing more videos, whether it be reacting to music, movies, other sporting events, and just having a wee chit chat like we had today. Go check out any other videos here on the channel. I posted my Blu-ray collection video yesterday, 45 minutes long, nowhere near as long as The Irishman. Until next time, folks, thanks very much for watching. I'm on social media, at CM42 TV on Twitter and Instagram. I'll catch you all down the road. Cheers.